Good morning. Uh, happy January 2nd. Uh, welcome to our second edition here of the 2022 Murder Mentality. Uh, and so what we're talking about today is emotional baggage. I want to be clear here. Um, all of us have some of this. So as I'm talking about this, I want you to appreciate that I'm coming from the perspective of somebody who is knowing how this goes, how I've dealt with it, what it feels like. Love you, Lacey. Thanks for all the hearts. Uh, what's up, Kyler? What's up, Stanley? Um, and so I want to really address the elephant in the room in modern society. And that's that we are massively, massively holding on to all of these negative fucking things in our lives, guys. We are holding on to all this stuff that isn't serving us. It's hurting us. It's hurting those around us. And I heard something a few days back that really hit me super hard. And it's that the, the doorway to your future and to your best life is too fucking small for you to carry all that emotional baggage through the doorway with you. Like, goosebumps already. Good stuff. Um, again, I want to make it clear, man. I've been through a lot too. All of us have. But every second that we spend waiting for somebody to either save us from our trauma and baggage or waiting for somebody to acknowledge our anger and resentment for the baggage that we're carrying, waiting for somebody to help us get out of the victimhood mindset of what's going on in our lives is a second we're spending outside of our calling, outside of the best version of ourselves, outside of what we could be fucking doing. All right. What's up? Happy New Year, John. Um, it's very, very, very important to note this. All of us have had some stuff done wrong to us. Of course, the phone's ringing off the hook. Of course. I've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> um, we can't focus on that anymore, guys. It's too late in the game, no matter what age you are, for you to be sitting around stewing about what has been done to you. When I say that, I mean like the people who have done you wrong, the people who have been in your life who have had a negative influence. Let's say even the people that maybe robbed you, fucked you over, and did bad, negative, hateful things to you. It is too late in the game, no matter how old you are, no matter how long ago that happened, no matter how recently that happened, for you to keep holding on to it. Your inability to drop that baggage is dropping, and, and it's not dropping, is blocking the blessings that God is trying to give you. Let me say that again, because I want to make sure everybody catches that. The baggage you're carrying emotionally on your back is blocking God's blessings from you. The baggage you're carrying inside your mind is being put in front of the blessings and the communication and the relationship that you could be having with your creator and the world around you. Because what those things act as is a lens that we filter everything through. If we have trust issues because something bad happened to us, well, let's see here. The problem is trauma becomes an identity for a lot of people. It can be a problem, but if trauma can become an identity, then it can also become not an identity. Uh, overcoming trauma is a much more potent identity. It's an identity that inspires lots of people. It's an identity that I've taken on that I've absolutely been told by dozens and dozens of people as a massive inspiration, and they would like to take that on themselves. What I'm trying to get at is it doesn't matter how bad it was, the thing that was done to you. It doesn't matter how long ago it was or how recently it was. It doesn't matter who is the person that did it. It doesn't matter how close you were to that person or how much you trusted them and so how bad it hurt and shattered your trust. Because trust me, let me say this without getting too fucking detailed, but I know, all right? I've been betrayed on levels that, that people don't even want to get into, I promise you that, and, and had it done to me clean by people who I cared about and trusted more than life itself. So... What I'm trying to tell you, though, is that it doesn't fucking matter. Nobody's coming to save you. You must be the hero of your own story. 
you must choose to stop carrying that weight on your back. Damn, I'm gonna go get that phone, just a second. Holy fucking shit. This message must be pretty fucking powerful because the devil's trying to distract the motherfucker pretty hard. So, let's get back into it, guys. I know that you've been done wrong. I know, what's up, Brittany? I know that people have hurt you in ways that you never thought you'd ever be hurt and people that you never thought you'd have to distrust or that would do something like that to you that you trusted implicitly have done things to you that you feel like have ruined your trust. But I'm telling you right now that you're letting the enemy win. You're allowing your spiritual fucking enemy to win when you put up walls because somebody hurt you once. You are letting the enemy win. Literally, love does not need a fucking fortress. Love has boundaries. Love is like a lone warrior that's capable of defending himself from anything or herself from anything. Love is the ability to see the purpose and the potential in every person. That means that you can see the potential good and the potential bad. I know a lot of people out there that are riding so hard on only seeing the good side of people that they don't see the bad potential that people have too. But I'm asking for you to be realistic and understand that all of us are sinners. All of us have negative side effects. All of us have negative traits. All of us hurt people. So us holding on to somebody else hurting us because it somehow hurt us worse isn't helping. Us holding on to trust issues is denying our best self to the world and to our God and to us. The doorway to your future is too small for you to carry that emotional baggage through. And so I'm asking for you today to please let it go. It's a new year. Fuck your resolutions. I don't give a fuck. I hope you stick to them. I hope you do. I don't give a fuck. Don't tell me about them. Tell me what trauma you're leaving in the fucking past for the rest of your life this year. Tell me what thing that's been holding you back that you're not going to fucking do anymore or not going to participate in mentally. I want to see people realize that we are all spirits on this physical journey that have so much fucking potential because God lives inside of you. And because God lives inside you, literally, your potential is limitless. So stop placing boundaries on your creator and what can happen in your life based off of some negative shit that happened early on in your life. There's no room for it anymore, guys. There's no fucking room for it. I fucked my life up like basically saying to the world, I can fuck me up more than you can for 33 fucking years. I mean, if you count my, you know, adulthood and the ability to make memories and shit, I need at least 20. And I don't ever get that time back. But what I do get is a massive amount of lessons that I've learned. And that's why I'm here doing this, guys. I'm here to speak life into the people that are afraid to trust anybody anymore. I'm here to speak life into people that have had too many negative fucking relationships and they're afraid to trust the person that really does have their fucking back. Put my hand up on that one. It's not easy, guys. When somebody hurts you bad enough, it becomes very difficult to even know if you can trust your own fucking judgment. But I'm telling you right now, I can work past it and so can you. I'm nothing fucking special. Truly, and I'm not. If I can do anything, so can you. It's just a blueprint. Why do you have your trust issues? What is the root of them? If you take the time, and you'll hear me say this over and over and over again, and write this shit down on paper, real paper, with real pen, 
Or if you're like me and you're bougie, you get like one of them electronic notepads, but it's, a, it's not a tablet, it's a literal notepad. <laughs> and you write it down. And very quickly, you'll start to see the root of the problems because when you have things written down, you can trace them, you can catalog them. You can organize them and say, oh, okay, cool. Well, it turns out that I have a lot of issues because I have, like, personally, here, I'll get real vulnerable with you guys again because I don't put fucking walls up. I have massive abandonment issues. Not only because of the shit that happened with Cassie, but because neither one of my parents were in my fucking life for a meaningful fashion until well into my 30s. And even then, still kind of weird, guys. <laughs> and that's something, even though I know that it's there, I still cope with. But what I'm saying is that I don't carry it on my fucking back like a burden anymore. I'm aware that I'm that person. I'm aware that I can get caught up and worry about abandonment or, oh, what if this person doesn't like what I did there, or this, that, or the other. And it will absolutely occupy my mind for at least a minute or two before I'm like, I recognize that. We're not playing this game anymore. I'm not asking you guys to be perfect. I'm just asking for you to have a conversation with your creator and with yourself often enough that you get to know you. Your creator already knows exactly who the fuck you are, and he's trying to introduce you to yourself with your conscience, with your heart, with the fucking thing that's constantly talking to you throughout all of the times in your life when you feel like you're about to be crushed. That's the point of growth. That's the point where you actually explode into a new you. And again, I will tell you, please stop wearing your trauma as if it's some sort of cross to bear. It's not. The thing about, you know, let's use this example. The thing about Jesus carrying the cross is it, it was brutalized while he was doing it. And he had to drag it to the place where they planned on fucking murdering him. But he did it willingly and with love, understanding that it wasn't actually a punishment. It was a gift that he was able to give the world because of what his purpose was. And you have a purpose too. I have a purpose. My purpose in life is to speak life into anybody that will listen to me. And I know that your purpose will absolutely light you on fire. But you won't find it while you're busy carrying all this dead fucking weight. That includes people. That includes habits. That includes anything that's not serving you. I want you to put your relationship with yourself and your creator in focus. In focus. Focus, not sitting around wondering what to do next. When it's in focus, you know. When it's God, me, nothing in between us, it's easy to listen. When there's 800 bad habits in between us, it's hard to listen. It's hard to pay attention. And those bad habits all come from that emotional fucking trauma. If that wasn't the case, we wouldn't have them. You can't be perfect, but what you can be is good. You can be a good servant. You can be a good person. And I'm asking you to be good to you. Treat yourself better than you treat your pets. <laughs> really. Treat yourself better than you treat your friends. I'm not saying that when I say like that you should treat your friends shitty, but I'm saying that you should put treating your relationship with you first above other people. Damn, that shit's like wobbly as fuck. It's so swollen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, really guys this year needs to be the year for change give it a theme give it a theme and I know we're all walking around out here with a lot of pain our church talked about our theme for this year being freedom and I feel like that fits really well free yourself from all of that pain Free yourself from all that trauma. Stop dragging it with you and see how fast you move once you drop it all and start looking up. I love you all. Again, as I always do, I'm going to invite you to do something different. Sit down with yourself. This is something most people can't do. Just be quiet. Sit with a pen and paper and then just write the first fucking thing that comes to your mind. And then read it afterwards and see where your mind's really at. It'll tell you a lot about yourself. Love you guys. Talk to you tomorrow.